Here's the satisfying sound of one's impalement. What for for this old trick? A few times I've been around that track, so it's not just gonna happen that track, cause I don't call it back, so I don't call it back. I've been marveling at updates from the Resident Evil 4 HD project for eight years, and yet I was still caught off guard by how good the final result looks. It's the best fan mod I've ever seen, and even up against professional remasters it would still be near the top of the pile. Graphics aside, just the story of the mod itself is interesting. It's an old story, one you've probably heard before, but it's the story the world needs to heal right now. Back in 2014, before the Dark Times, Modders named Chris and Albert independently started new texture packs for Resident Evil 4 and Dolphin. Chris was new to texture creation, but Albert had experience from modding the disastrous 2007 PC port. Many of those textures weren't great, but Albert was willing to try again. The two decided it would be better to cooperate than run competing packs, so they settled into a two-pass system where each creator's work would be judged and improved by the other before being finalized. Having two sets of eyes on everything helped ensure that the textures would be accurate to the originals and also just good in general. And because Albert lived in Spain, he was able to visit the same locations Capcom did when creating the game. The original staff used heavily compressed photographs of English and Spanish landmarks as textures in the game, which left the opportunity to visit those locations and take the photos again. Some of the architecture is famous and probably wasn't hard to track down, but finding a random wall in an alley is something else. I've played Resident Evil 4 at least a few dozen times and I still don't think half of these things would ever ring a bell, especially when so many were spliced together from different objects. A lot of Capcom's textures were also sourced from old stock libraries, and some were stolen. And whenever possible, Chris and Albert tracked down the full res versions of those assets. Leon's hair is one example. It's not as striking a difference as the texture from the Dolphin Pack, but it blends in better because it's literally the same texture as before, just HD. For everything else, new textures had to be created to match the originals and the results are close enough that they don't stand out as being any less faithful than the real-life restorations. The original plan was to make the textures for Dolphin. You can still see the Wii cursor in the early screenshots. But they switched after the release of the Ultimate HD Edition, an edition that was neither Ultimate nor HD, because of the potential a native PC port brought. Without the restrictions of an emulator, it became possible to remap textures to fix seams or warping. As someone with a lot of experience working around those issues, it's hard to overstate how much power the ability to overcome bad mappings gives you. From there, the project kept snowballing into something bigger and better than a texture replacement. They added new specular highlights to certain objects to better simulate metal or gloss. A few objects go a little overboard, but most of it is tastefully restrained and well suited to RE4's look. They also reverted the awful new lighting to restore the GameCube contrast levels. In lieu of actual graphics upgrades, Capcom had blown out the contrast to make the game look more dynamic, but it just made everything look bad. Chris and Albert not only reverted those changes, but added genuine upgrades like baked-in shadows in their place. They also fixed color temperature issues, stopped light from blooming through walls, improved the water physics, reduced pop-in, and corrected a mountain of bugs in general. A lot of lights in the game didn't cast onto the environment because of simple glitches, and whenever possible the torches and flashlights in the game now function as real light sources. This particular enhancement really adds a lot. It makes the villagers even creepier to see them illuminated as they approach. And then there are the buttons. Those sexy, plastic smoke shows. There are probably a thousand control interfaces in the game, and each one was given the fullest, least necessary amount of polish possible. I don't know why these speak to me so much, but they're among the most satisfying upgrades and a great showcase for how much 3D edits can add. A few months into the project, it became possible to edit the models for the maps and characters, and Chris and Albert exploited this to fix even more of Bug Mountain. Whenever a higher poly cutscene model existed, they ported it into the gameplay, with the weapons and items using the higher quality examine models all the time now. New polygons were added to bring depth to door handles and other small objects that were previously just painted on, and in some cases, 2D assets were completely rebuilt in 3D. This crappy looking JPEG of a wine rack is now an actual wine rack. A random jumble of pipes was fully modeled with everything carefully kept in the same place. It doesn't matter if it was an important area or not, everything got the same level of care. My favorite example of this is the sad little shed before entering the island compound, with its stairs just painted on, cowering in the shadows, hoping no one will notice its shameful fraud. It's a proper God-fearing shanty now. In a few cases, they created entirely new areas. A walkway was added to make Ada's campaign more consistent with the map as seen in Leon's. And they also added a bonus room that's easy to miss if you're familiar with the game and have come to ignore certain doors. I'm not going to spoil what's in it, but it's an impressive flex of all the skills they built up while editing other models. 
The final release came with a few surprise enhancements, with a special overlay menu allowing changes to the field of view and visual effects. It also lets you play Ashley's segment with the fixed cameras from the Japanese version, which is worth a try but not very fun in my opinion. I love the fixed cameras in the older games, but the angles used here do a poor job of showing the action. It's not part of the mod, but if you want to take things a step further, you can also apply Reshade's Ray Tracing Shader, which looks pretty natural to me, but I didn't use it in any of my footage. Every part of the mod gels together so well that tampering with the lighting further doesn't seem necessary. There are some flaws and a few rough spots that could still be polished. Most of them are technical issues like a missing model or audio desyncs, but a few of the textures themselves don't live up to the rest of the pack's quality. Some of the source photos have hard sunlight that looks wrong when used at night, and in those cases it might have been better to remake the texture rather than restore it from a photo. These nitpicks are pretty rare and even the worst textures still look good, and an update has already been released to fix the first batch of issues. The result of all of this work is an awe-inspiring upgrade, but one that doesn't try to draw attention to itself. It still looks like Resident Evil 4, as if you turned the graphics from low to ultra. It reminds me a little bit of the feeling I got when playing Ocarina of Time 3D, where it felt like something new and the same game I remembered both at once. But this project is far less controversial. They didn't over-brighten or over-saturate anything. They let the original art direction stand, and it makes me appreciate how good the game always looked. It captures the spooky, sleepy, hollow-type atmosphere of late autumn perfectly. The undersaturated look makes color really pop when the developers use it, and the huge amount of art and culture ripped off from real life almost makes the castle feel like a virtual tour of an actual landmark. All of that is preserved and enhanced by the mod. Because it's so faithful, I was often stumped about whether some details were in the original game or not, like the translucent glass on this door. It wasn't. They changed the model to allow that not just to make it look cool, but because that's how the real life source looked. The few times they deviate from the original art, it always has a clear and unassailable logic behind it, and the results are for the better. There's really no reason not to play the game like this from now on. It's one of the best remasters a game has gotten, and it's free. Unless you just don't have the hard drive space, it's a complete no-brainer. I assume that someone, somewhere, will argue that this is a bad thing, because it will make people less likely to buy an official remake, but I think it's just the opposite. Remake 2 was a fine game, but left me disappointed because it came at the expense of a faithful remake. Something was lost by taking that new direction. Here we have the ideal version of Resident Evil 4, and that gives Capcom a license to go nuts with their remake. The stakes couldn't possibly be lower. They can set the entire thing in the recycled lab from 2 and 3, who cares? RE4 plays so well that a full remake is mostly pointless anyway, and this mod only makes me more open to whatever they do. It's a new high watermark for fan projects, and I think people are going to be drawing inspiration from it for a very long time. I wouldn't have tried to retexture Majora's Mask if not for seeing their progress updates and being amazed by what was possible when fans really commit. Because this upgrade is free, you can thank Chris and Albert by donating what you would have spent on a remaster to them instead. They deserve that and more. I wouldn't be surprised if Capcom actually did hire this man. Before I leave you to sort your Ubisoft Quartz collection, I wanted to mention some of the other Resident Evil packs that are available. These are AI-based and much smaller scale projects, but still very good regardless. When Resident Evil HD launched, there was some fussing over its visuals. It was clear that Capcom hadn't rendered new backgrounds and instead just cheaply upscaled the SD ones with a waxy filter. They also pulled the same contrast boosting trick used in RE4 to make the SD visuals pop, which crushed the blacks in most areas. There was a lot of speculation about why this remaster turned out so badly while Zero did get great new renders. The theory is that Capcom lost the original models while Zero's assets were preserved. Whatever the reason, the game suffered badly from releasing just before the big AI upscaling boom. A modder by the name of Shiryu took it upon themselves to redo the upscales by running the GameCube backgrounds through Gigapixel and ESRGAN. It's still not perfect, but the results are always much better than Capcom's, and at its best it gets close to the quality of Zero's HD remaster. At its worst, it at least makes the ugliest areas passable now. The modder seemed to go silent before finishing the pack, so the 3D objects are mostly missing, but the rest of the game is done, and it's a great overall upgrade. The HD remaster was a bit of a mess all over, so there are a few other mods that should be paired with the AI pack. One adds hotkeys for disabling the contrast boosting shader responsible for crushing the blacks. Toggling this on and off, it's clear to see the details and even doorways that are being blacked out by the shader, so it's easy to recommend turning it off and sticking with the GameCube levels. There's also a music mod that fixes the volume and speed of the soundtrack. For whatever reason, certain tracks were dramatically sped up in the remaster and it sounds really weird. 
This mod drops normalized GameCube tracks in their place. Just take a listen to the improvement. The PlayStation games have also received AI overhauls, although these required more hands-on effort to pull off due to the mask textures used. These contain fragments of the backdrop that are needed to create the illusion of depth, otherwise your character would appear in front of everything all of the time. The masks cause seam issues when upscaling, so the Seamless HD project ditched them and used custom software to generate new ones. They also bundled their packs with a custom Dolphin version that fixes the aspect ratio and a few other issues. The results in RE2 aren't great because the backgrounds were only 240p, so it's got that wobbly look where the AI isn't sure what's going on. But it does succeed in getting rid of aliasing and compression artifacts, making the game appear much cleaner. It also reduces the clashing between the models and the scenery, with the 3D objects no longer sorely standing out. The creators also did some manual editing to fix text and to make the Nemesis window consistent with RE3. 3 was 480p on the GameCube and the difference in the upscale quality is dramatic. Many of the backdrops are about as good as I would expect real HD renders from the original models to be, and the 3D models are almost fully blended with the environments. Even without showing comparisons, it would be easy to tell that the visuals are too pristine to have come from a PlayStation. I'm always going to be butthurt that 2 and 3 never got remade with the original gameplay, but these AI packs go a long way to making them more fun to revisit. Like with Resident Evil 4, there's really no reason not to use them when playing these games. If you still haven't tried the Resident Evil 4 HD project, you should stop watching now. Mostly because the video is over, but also to go download it. If you've never played Resident Evil 4 at all, now is the time. The Steam version often drops to $5 and it's one of the best games ever made. If this mod isn't enough to tip the scales for you, then you should probably just quit gaming. And Capcom deserves acknowledgement for how they responded to this mod. With certain companies spamming takedowns to modders and rumors of a Resident Evil 4 remake constantly bubbling up, it wouldn't have been surprising to see this mod targeted. Not only did they decline to shut it down, they actually pinned the mod onto their Steam community page years ago. It seems like they were just as happy to watch it develop as everyone else and wanted the fans to see it. So what a wonderful story. The fans get a lot of great upgrades, and Capcom is probably seeing a sales spike due to the interest in the mod. Everyone is happy. Forever. Women. 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 Hey! Women. 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 Finally, the line's Jack free. Hey, Hunnigan. Women. You did it, Leon.